Well, I don't think it's a coincidence. You could go ahead and put the thing up there. And we're going to be talking about the joy of the Lord today. Praise God. Because sometimes when things happen in your life, uh, you can lose your joy. And th this is what the enemy wants. Because as we're going to find out, without the joy of the Lord, you cannot receive from God. And if you cannot receive from God and the enemy has an open door, it, things are going to get tough. But we're not going to allow that. We're going to lay hold of the joy of the Lord. We're going to find out what the Bible has to say about it. Okay, let's put the, uh, the first picture up there of the guy wires. Yeah, that's the best I can find. Some of you, most of you people, this is a TV antenna, okay? This is what, when I was a little boy, this was what was on top of my house, okay? It's the only thing I could find. But notice, this is what a, a guy wire is. See, there's three wires. You could, tall towers can stand up, even with winds and everything, if they got the guy wires. And so a tower can pretend that's a tower, okay? And the uh, tower, it would be a picture of your faith. Some have tall towers, lots of faith. And, uh, but whatever the size, you're going to need guy wires to hold it up. And uh, <clears throat> so let's go to the, to the next. Um, okay. These are the guy wires for your faith tower. Okay. Love, hope, and joy. So if the enemy can snip just one of those, your tower is going to go down. You won't have any faith, and therefore you can't receive from God. Because faith worketh by love, the Bible says. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the Bible will read some scriptures that show that without joy, you can't receive from God. You can't receive from the wells of salvation. So let's look at Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. You could have his strength. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those whose hope is in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Leave that up there. So what gives you this strength of the Lord, we find out it is the joy of the Lord. It can take you from I'm growing faint, or if you faint, it also means you quit. And that's the only way the enemy can win. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So he tries to steal your joy. So you will faint or quit because that's the only way you can lose is if you quit. How, and it doesn't take any talent. How much talent does it take to not quit? How much abilities? How much gifting? No, anyone cannot quit. That means every one of you can defeat the devil. And the joy of the Lord is um, the way to do it. So... We need to learn more about this because it's a great attribute to have the joy of the Lord. So how do you get it? How do you keep it, this kind of strength? Keep from losing it. So if you want to know the answer to that, you have come to the right place this morning. Hallelujah. So, man, I am getting straight. I didn't even have my glasses and I was doing good. So... Let's do a little exploring in the Word of God. Let's look at Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be you sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy gives you strength so you don't quit. The Bible says if you faint, in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So when adversity comes, if you don't have the joy of the Lord, you don't have the strength, you faint or quit. 
the joy of the Lord enables you to receive from God. The Bible says the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. And so this is why the enemy comes to attack you, your, to make you lose your joy. And he'll usually use someone that you care about, that loves you. Why? And you love. Why? Because it hurts more that way. But he, he'll use just about anybody, anybody willing. But so the joy of the Lord gives you strength and it enables you to receive from God. We'll see that from the scriptures. There are other benefits. Proverbs 17, 22. A cheerful heart or a joyful heart is, the King James says, is like unto a medicine, is good medicine. But a crushed spirit dries up the bones. We don't want our bones drying up. No, we want to have the joy of the Lord. You can get healed just from the joy of the Lord because it's like a medicine, praise the Lord. Um, so let's see the difference that it makes. So let's start out with, find out how do you receive your joy? How you received your joy? Well, you get your joy when you get saved. It's part of the salvation package. You know, there's a lot more than just eternal life when Jesus becomes the Lord and Savior of your life. You get redeemed from the curse of the law. You have authority over the, the enemy and uh, in the world system. You have dominion. You get the name of Jesus and the authority behind it. The Spirit of God, the kingdom of God comes to live inside of you. You get the Word of God to speak and things have to change. The question is now, what are we going to do with all that that God has given us? And joy is part of the package. It is, the, it is a gift from God, unsolicited. It comes with salvation. But it can go dormant in you when that sister Bertha better than you said that thing to you and that joy could just go down and be dormant as if it was dead and lost. And that's what I'm talking about when I say you've lost your joy. But <clears throat> so salvation, when we get salvation, it gives us wells of salvation. 3 John 2. Now they call it 3 John 1, 2. Say in my day, we were a lot smarter. We knew it was only one chapter. It says, beloved, I wish above all things thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So you got your soul prosperity. And if you're good, doing good there, it generates then physical health prosperity. And if you're doing good on the soul, if your soul is prospering in the area of material realm, then you will prosper in the material realm. So there's various wells of salvation that you can draw from. If you need a physical healing, you could draw from the well of salvation that goes with that. So how do you draw from the wells of salvation? Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2 through 3. Surely God is in my salvation, therefore I got my joy. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength. Why? I got his joy and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. So if you have no joy, you can't draw water from it. The joy of the Lord is like the bucket on an, on an old-fashioned well. The wells that were in Vogue at this time. Let's look at the picture of that. We have that. Okay, here's the old-fashioned well. You crank and the, <clears throat> the rope goes down and you got a bucket and it goes into the water and then you crank it the other way and you got your, well, that's how you draw from the well. It's with a bucket you draw. You, with the joy bucket, you draw from the wells of salvation, okay? And the bigger the bucket, the more water that you get when it comes up. Ooh, but that'll be hard to crank. But the bigger the joy bucket, the more strength you have so you're able to do it. And that's how you draw from the wells of salvation. If you don't have joy, it's like trying to draw water out of well without a bucket. All you get is a wet rope. And what good is that? <laughs> so you're wasting your time and your energy hating or cursing the one 
who has caused you to put your bucket down because Satan is the real thief of who stole your joy bucket. Amen. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. So that's not going to do you any good at all. Give them a piece of your mind. All you've lost is a little bit of your mind. You keep doing that, you're not going to have a whole lot left. So what can happen if you lose your joy? Well, let's look at Joel chapter 1, 7 and 10 through 12. He had, this is um, to the husbandman and the farmer, okay? He hath laid my vine waste, the enemy, and barked my fig tree. He had made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Uh, lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meat offering, the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests, the Lord's ministers mourn. The field is wasted. The land mourneth for the corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. The oil uh, languish it. Be ye ashamed, O you husbandmen. Howl, O you vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up, and the fig tree languisheth, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree. Even all the trees of the field are withered. Why? Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. If you give up your joy of the Lord, the devil will come in and bark your fig tree. And everything will be wasted and languished. And there's only one thing to do is that find that bucket, whatever you do. Because what you need in that situation is you need to receive from God. But if you don't have your joy bucket, you cannot draw from the wells of salvation. The joy of the Lord, it is very important to keep the joy of the Lord. So when things happen and you know you've lost it, you got to do something about it. I'm going to help you with that. Hallelujah. So let's talk about how to keep from losing your joy. Wouldn't that be better? Just don't lose it to begin with. Let's look at Luke 10, 17 through 20. So Jesus sent them out, you know, to do the work of the ministry and 72 of them, and they returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. He said, yeah, isn't that great? But nevertheless, or however, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Now, what does he mean by that? What he is saying is, if you base your joy on your circumstances, see, they went out there and everything was going good and, and they came, you know, they cast out devils, healed the sick, and they're walking back to Jesus, you know, we bad, we bad, we bad, we did all this. But Jesus said, no, because what if it didn't go good? What if you're in, in this world, you should have tribulations. And if you base it, your joy on the circumstances, you're going to lose your joy because the circumstances are not always going to be good. Sometimes they're going good. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes that you don't. But Jesus said, you base your joy on something that never changes, that it's always there. It can never change. It'll never go away. Therefore, you could always have your joy. And this is it. Your name is written in heaven. If your name is written in heaven, it ain't coming out of there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. So now we need to know how we lose our joy. Uh, let's look at the next slide. John 16, 22 B. That means at the end. Your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Okay, so man can't take it from you. The devil can't take it from you. You have dominion and authority. God won't take it from you. He's the one that gave it to you to begin with. The only way you lose it is if you put it down. You have to give it up because you got to get that satisfaction of giving that, telling so-and-so, 
how the cow ate the cabbage rather than you know and you may get some satisfaction out of that and feel pretty good but look what you're gonna lose you lose your ability to receive from God you will not be able to draw from the wells of salvation because you don't have a joy bucket it's not worth it there's nothing worth giving that up praise the Lord so just let him say whatever and you trust in the Lord and the truth will come out hallelujah so and then the very next verse after this we're talking about joy then 1623 in that day what day the day that you have joy this is how valuable this thing is it's right up there with love and hope and joy in that day the day of joy you will no longer ask me anything Jesus said very truly I tell you my father will give you whatever you ask in my name if you have the joy of the Lord and you go to God with the joy of the Lord whatever you ask in the name of Jesus he will give it to you that means you don't go and say oh Lord I guess uh, maybe you know uh, if it be thy will you'll no no Where, there's no joy there there's no faith there there's no boldness there yeah, you want to pray according to God's will, but you first discern what God's will based on the word of God, which is his will. And then you with joy know it's yours because all of his promises are yea and amen. And you believe it in your heart and you declare it with your mouth. And then you receive it because you got a bucket to receive from the wells of salvation. Well, what kind of well? Whatever kind of thing you need, God's got a well with that kind of water in it. Praise the Lord. But without a bucket... You're not going to get it. It's not worth the satisfaction of uh, being one up on someone to lose the ability to receive from God. I've learned, you know, when you go up against people and they got guile, I don't compete with that if I'm smart. I've spent the last 40 years trying to get rid of guile so that I could be like Jesus and people could say about me, in him was found no guile so I'm not certainly not going to go and try to to out guile somebody I just let them whatever and uh, and then I'll just trust the Lord to make things right because there's such a thing as spoil in the kingdom of God hallelujah glory to God but oh pastor David somebody said this about me lied about me whatever here's what the Bible says Matthew 5 11 through 12 Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. By the way, there's a difference between consequences for sin okay. and persecution. Next verse. Or is that it? Okay. So you're blessed. It said, be glad, rejoice, have joy, use your bucket. And then they'll see you. See, he prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 5, 44 and 46. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That you may be children of your father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good. And sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. On the just and the unjust. Hallelujah. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Just bless them and let God make it up to you. Okay, well, Pastor David, what if I've lost my joy bucket? How do I get it back? I, okay, I got, I get it. I get it. It's very important. I don't want to go without it. But I, I seem to have lost it and I'd like to get it back. Well, let's say, have you ever lost your keys or your wallet? Yeah. So what, when you're trying to find it, what's the first thing you do? You think, where was the last place I know that I had it? That'll probably work with your lost joy bucket. And see, I had my joy and then, oh, when Sister Bertha Better Than You said this about me, I, I think that's where I'll, now you know where to go back. Just bless her, forgive her, bless her, call, ask God to you know, pour out his blessing upon her and pick up your bucket and go to God and get all that you need and even desire, hallelujah, because he's able to give exceedingly abundantly more than what you can ask or think whatsoever things you desire. Believe that you have them 
and you shall receive them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, and then, and all you have to do is ask for it back. That's what David did. God worked that. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever in no respect of persons. And we got a better covenant than he'd had. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Psalm 51, 12 through 13. David lost his joy bucket. Things weren't going good and getting worse because he couldn't receive from God. So he figured it out. And he said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And look what happens when you have joy. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Every great soul winner is a person that has the joy of the Lord. I want you to think about just people that you know personally, maybe the top two or three or whatever, four or five or one, that is the biggest soul winner. And I bet they walk in the joy of the Lord. Because salvations and joy of the Lord go hand in hand. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Why is that? Well, if you go in there like look like you need a Rolaids or a Tums <laughs> and look like you just sucked on about a half a dozen lemons and oh, let me tell you about my God. They're like, no, I don't, I don't think I want a, your God. But if you've got the joy of the Lord, they're going to think, hey man, something's up. I might want to check this guy out. Hallelujah. So, where does that leave us right now? Remember I said that God was going to do it right here today in this place. In the, in the world and in, in watching here, whether you're here live or uh, watching by video later on or even live stream right now, there are three categories of people. One, never had a bucket. Two, had a bucket but lost it. Three, got your bucket. Amen. Well, if you're category three, you got your bucket, just wait a minute. Let's take care of the other two and we'll all go to God together. And whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, our Father's going to give it to us. Praise the Lord. Because that is the word of God. And God is not a man that he can lie. Hallelujah. So let me just talk to the people who never had a bucket. The reason why you don't have a bucket is because you never received the salvation of the Lord because it comes with the salvation. So if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart and you'd like to have the ability to receive all the good things that God has for you, he's not stingy. He's not withholding anything from you. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. He wants to make you a joint heir with Jesus. God is good. He's for you, not against you. He is light and in him is no darkness at all. He wants you into his family and you can enter just the way you are. You don't have to get cleaned up. God loves you. It, the only way to get cleaned up is to let God clean you up. And he won't do that if you're not his child. So if you want to receive Jesus, just pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins and make me brand new. I declare and confess that you are my Lord and Savior and I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, everybody who wanted a bucket got one. Amen. Now we got to deal with those who had it and they lost it. We're just going to do what David did. We're going to pray and ask God to restore it. Then we're going to all receive whatever it is that we want from God because he's a good God. He won't give you anything bad. Hallelujah. So let's just all pray this. In the, I'll just lead us and you just be in agreement, all right? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever and no respecter of persons. And just as you restored to David his joy, Lord, we just... We forgive those that have hurt us. Uh, Lord, we, we just bless them because, Lord, we want our, your joy more than anything else. And we give up anything else that would keep us from having it. And so we ask in the name of Jesus, restore unto us the joy 
of your salvation and uphold us with your free spirit. Then we will teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee in Jesus' name. And all the people said in agreement. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm looking at a whole of people with got buckets. Some got some big buckets out there I can see. Praise the Lord. And we're going to pray. And you just think about right now and say, the Lord, this is what you want when you turn that crank, when going to the wells of salvation and look inside what you want to see. It may be the cancellation of debt. It may be healing in your body. It may be reconciliation on a uh, personal uh, relationship. It may be a new job. It may be an open door or a door that has to close. You may want the peace of God. There's, whatever it is, just think about because Jesus said, and when you got joy, in the day of joy, you'll ask anything in his name, and the Father will give it to you. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, see, we've got our joy buckets, and it's with anticipation, Lord. We uh, come to you to receive the things that we desire and have need of because great is thy faithfulness. You said if we would do that, that Lord Jesus, your Father would give us uh, anything that we ask if it lines up with the Word of God. So in Jesus' name, Lord, we just ask for physical healings. I'll say there's not one person to walk out of here sick in any kind of way in Jesus' name. I call forth for the impossible, Lord, because whatever we ask, you're going to give it. So in Jesus' name, I say relationships restored. The things that were hurt, Lord, supernatural, God of the impossible, filling up our buckets right now. I see buckets being filled up from heaven in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for healing people. I thank you for canceling debt. I thank you, Lord, for uh, new jobs, better jobs in Jesus' name. And all kind of things from good things from heaven coming in to the joy buckets of the people. And I thank you, Lord, that it is ours. We lay hold of it now. Help us, Lord, to remember this the next time we feel sad, the next time we feel disappointed where someone has hurt us, that we'll remember, I'm going to hold on to my joy bucket because I want to receive from God because whatever the enemy can do, you've got something better and can bring the victory every single time. So in Jesus' name, I just place a guard and dispatch warring angels to watch over us to make sure and remind us by the Holy Ghost not to let place down our joy bucket for all the days of our life. And we shall be a people that will continually receive from God and freely we receive, freely we will give for the glory of God. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And all the people said, amen and amen. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Praise the Lord.